Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another product shootout for you here on the channel today, but this one's gonna be a little bit different because I'm not testing products from different brands. I'm not even testing different products from the same brand. I'm testing a single product, the Arctic P12 PWM fan, but I'm testing six of them in my Be Quiet Pure Base 500DX chassis to show the optimal setup in terms of number and placement inside the chassis for best thermal and noise performance. You're really gonna have to wrap your mind around the results, particularly when we get to the decibel normalized results because you may find, as I did when looking over the results, that things are a little bit confusing. Four fans, worse than three fans? Five fans, worse than four fans? How could that be? Well, it's because when you get into decibel normalized testing of multiple fans, that additional fan may provide more noise than it does thermal benefit. So it's gonna be really interesting when we get into those results. But before we do, let me go over three caveats. Number one, I fully intended this to be a 120 millimeter versus 140 millimeter fan shootout, but I found I had so much data to go over just using these six 120 millimeter fans that I had to split this into two videos. So this is the first segment in my second segment, which I intend to post in a couple of weeks. I'll be testing these 540 millimeter fans. They have the exact same design. They're the Arctic P14s. I'm just going to be using the exact same test setup. It's going to be completely comparable. So in the end, you will be able to decide, well, are these 140 millimeter fans better than 120 millimeter fans? And how about if I have a specific number, like two of these versus three of these, or maybe four of these versus five of these, there's still going to be plenty to go over in that second segment of this video. But for now, I'm sticking to 120 millimeter fans. I promise there's plenty of data for you to pour over. It's gonna be really interesting. The second caveat is that I did have some issues in terms of the fans I was using. And this was a little bit sad to me and disappointing. I've been recommending the P-Series fans from Arctic ever since I first tested them early in 2020. And people have been buying them and a lot of them have been perfect and people are saying, these are fantastic fans, thanks for the recommendation. A few people have reported back that they had problems with noise at specific RPMs. And I said, you know, I'd never noticed that, but I'm gonna look out for it. And in this test, because I was testing so many different RPM levels, I had the occasion to stumble upon the problem. The P12 fans definitely create a harmonic resonance at specific RPM levels or bands. In my case, and specifically, literally in my case, it was 1400 to 1500 RPM where they created a high pitched noise. And when you push beyond 1500 RPM, they quieted down again, all right? Now in other cases with other equipment inside, perhaps different materials, steel versus aluminum, that harmonic resonance may be different. Maybe it won't even exist at all. But I wanna be upfront about this. It is an issue. I still think these are great fans at a great price and they perform really well, but you may find that you have to tune out a certain zone of RPM ranges and say, I can't use those. Those don't work for these fans. It still gives you a lot of opportunity to tune the fans, but it does mean there's a little bit of a problem with design. And I've already sent audio samples to Arctic. They're going over it. There is no dispute about the problem. My audio samples definitely show that there was an issue, but I'm not gonna include that in this video because it wasn't meant to be an expose. My test is really just about fan placement and number. And the fact that the P12 fans have a little bit of a problem at a specific RPM range really isn't relevant to my testing. I still wanna focus on the results, which is how do you optimize fan placement and number in your chassis? The third caveat is when I did my decibel normalized testing, I had to simplify it somewhat. And that meant when I say tested six fans and I normalized it at 35 decibels at two feet, which is how I did it about at shoulder level. So from the user's perspective, I honed in on a specific RPM level for all six fans. All right, so perhaps it was gonna be 1200 RPM for six fans hit 35 decibels. There is probably an infinite number of ways you can optimize six fans to hit the same decibel level at different RPMs for each fan. I couldn't go into that. For instance, maybe I wanted the rear fan at 1500 RPM and my top fans at 1000 RPM and my front fans at 1200 RPM. That may be the best, but I couldn't go into that in this video because it would have taken basically until the end of time for me to get you the results. Perhaps if you're interested in a follow-up video, I will take one setup maybe four fans or maybe five fans, and I will try to optimize the RPM of each fan to hit a specific decibel level for the whole system. You can imagine how complicated that is, all right? So I tune one fan and I hit 35 decibels, and then once I start tuning the other fan, I go outside of my decibel zone 
now I have to retune all the fans. So it was really going to be kind of beyond my capabilities to do that. You probably need an audio lab to do that with automated systems running all the fans. That's not what I do here. I'm just trying to give you simple results that will inform your PC building endeavors. So without further ado, let's take a quick tour of my test system and then I'll get into the results. Here's the Be Quiet PureBase 500DX chassis stripped of its factory installed fans and ready for installation of the Arctic fans. There are six fan locations that I could use, one in the rear, two on the top, and three in front. And take note that the three in front were mounted inboard to allow for a greater gap between the fans and the air filter attached to the outside of the case. As you may have already noticed, I have a Scythe Fuma 2 cooler installed. It sits atop a Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core processor, and I have an EVGA GeForce RTX 3080 video card. Both the CPU cooler and the video card's fans will be locked at around 50% PWM in order to maximize the impact of the case cooling. I used a real world setup for all of my testing with the case closed and all panels attached positioned next to my desk with a sound meter positioned two feet away at around my shoulder height and directed diagonally so that it would pick up sound from both the rear and top fans as well as the front fans. With the setup out of the way, let's get into the benchmarks. I'll start with the most straightforward of my four benchmarks. This is Cinebench R20 running a five minute loop with the Arctic P12 PWM fans at maximum RPM, which is around 1900 for this model. Now I do provide both CPU temps and VRM temps as well as an average, but I'm going to be mostly focusing here on the CPU temps. Now as you can see, adding more fans does tend to drive down those temps, but the correlation isn't exactly linear. In fact, I found that the worst combination was having just three front fans. This simply did not allow enough of that CPU heat to exhaust out of the case. On the other hand, I found that having at least one top fan was very beneficial. The best overall result was definitely having six fans. That's the full case filled with fans in every fan slot, but it was also the loudest at 42 decibels. So I think a good compromise here would be two front and one rear or two front, one rear and one top. Things get a little bit more complicated when we move to the decibel normalized results because here the added penalty in terms of noise from additional fans can outweigh the thermal benefit. So we see the six fan setup really doesn't excel here, coming in at 77 degrees and 49 on the VRMs. On the other hand, again, two front, one rear, and one top is very good, as is a simple two front, one rear setup. Thanks to the much higher RPM you can run when you don't have a top fan. Things get a whole lot more interesting when we add a second source of heat to our system, namely the RTX 3080, which pumps out 320 watts of heat. It is a veritable space heater. And in this situation, you definitely need that lower fan in the front of your case. It was useless when it came to CPU temps. When it comes to GPU temps, however, that third fan in the front does a whole lot, not just for the GPU, but also for the chipset, which tends to get soaked in heat exhausted by the GPU. But take note, three front fans alone still aren't very good because they do allow that CPU to get very hot at 69 degrees. That was the hottest in this test. I would recommend instead something like three front, one rear and one top, which was a very good solution without maxing out the decibel level. If you wanted something a little bit quieter and still wanted to run at maximum RPM, you could do something like three front and one rear. But if you want to fully optimize your system, you're going to want to go at something lower than maximum RPM. So let's take a look at my decibel normalized results. As we look at this last set of benchmarks, I want to remind you that my CPU cooler fans as well as my GPU cooler fans were locked at a set RPM throughout these tests so that all the differences you see here are attributable to the case fans alone. Now, clearly, when we get into these decibel normalized results, there are some winners and losers. And the best result overall for both the CPU and the GPU was to have a full set of six fans, even though they were running at just 1380 RPM to hit that 35 decibel normalized result. Posting nearly identical benchmarks were the three front, one rear and three front, one rear, one top setups that of course still benefited from the full array of fans in the front and could easily cool the CPU thanks to their 
plentiful exhaust capacity. Now, unlike in my Cinebench R20 benchmarks, running three front fans alone was decent here because it did provide sufficient airflow to the GPU, but I still don't think it's a very balanced setup. Unfortunately, to get better performance in a high-end gaming system, it's not as simple as moving those three fans around and shuffling the deck. You're going to have to add additional fans because I found the other three fan setups were inferior. Therefore, I'd recommend anyone with a high-powered gaming system using 120mm case fans go with four fans at a minimum. All right, well, I hope you found those results as interesting as I did. You know, this is just the beginning of a conversation. There's a lot I left on the table in terms of optimization. There's really infinite possibilities. But hopefully you have now a starting point to think about what fans do inside a chassis. There's so many variables that I can't even consider. For instance, the case that you're using, the placement of the case next to your desk, how far away it is from you, which direction it is, which side of the desk it's on is going to affect your perception of that noise. And just in terms of thermals, putting aside noise levels, the GPU you're using, the CPU you're using, the cooler you have, how hard you push your system, all of these things are going to come into play. So again, this is just a starting point for you to do your own experimentation to optimize your system. As I said, I do have a follow-up video coming where I'll be testing 140 millimeter fans. I do think that will be really interesting, but just based on the 120 millimeter fans, I think, gosh, there's a lot to be said here. And I hope that you'll post your comments down below, your questions, your thoughts about this. And of course, any critiques you have, like, well, why didn't you do it this way or that way? You know, I listen to all of the comments you have, all the constructive criticism to try to create better reviews and better shootouts to give you more information to really optimize your systems. Now, in terms of my results, I found that there were definitely some better combinations and some really bad combinations. Absolutely worst of all is having three fans in front and none in the rear or on top. And unfortunately, this is how a lot of cases are coming these days because manufacturers want to emphasize the RGB fans they have or maybe a glass panel on the front. That's great for looks. It's absolutely horrible for thermals. If you have a system, a case that you bought like this, just right away, buy a fourth fan for the rear, all right? Otherwise, your CPU is absolutely going to choke on its own heat unless you're using liquid cooling. Of course, that's, a, that's another variable. I'm using air cooling here which I thought was most representative of what people are doing, particularly people who want to optimize fans in their chassis are probably going to be using air cooling. Now, in terms of best setups, it's going to depend on whether or not you're using your system mainly for gaming or mainly for content creation. That is because games press your GPU into action, really push it to 100%, whereas content creation more often does that with your CPU. And because they're kind of in different zones in your chassis, you're going to find that if you're a content creator, you want more fans up top, definitely a fan in the rear, and maybe you don't need as many fans in the front of your chassis. If you're a gamer, you definitely want three fans in the front, and particularly that bottom fan, which I didn't actually think was going to do much, did a huge amount for the GPU and the chipset, which basically gets soaked in heat from your GPU. You want to get that air out of there, and having that lower front fan really did a lot of good for a gaming scenario. I was also really fascinated by how good adding one top fan was for overall thermal performance. Most cases don't have that fan there. They may have a fan bracket there, but very few cases come from the factory with a top fan. I'd say definitely consider that for any system you're running. It's great for either content creation where you have a lot of CPU heat or gaming where you have a lot of GPU heat and you want to get that out the top of your chassis. So that's a great tweak for anyone and pretty much like probably 99% of you didn't buy a case with a top fan installed. So that's going to be an optimization you can make right out of the gate based on my results. So again, post your questions down below. If you enjoyed this video, please do give me a like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.